if we can't build the next Pokemon Go, what if we build a place where the next thousand Pokemon Go's can get built onto? Right? Mm -hmm. And so we built Superworld. On the 65th episode of Passion in Progress, Rish Latlakar. Rish's background spans technology and entertainment, venture capital, investment banking, and management consulting. He is the co founder of Superworld, an augmented reality platform on the blockchain. And he's also the co founder of The Rogue Initiative, a film, TV, virtual reality, and gaming production studio. He was previously a senior business developer slash global evangelist at TopTal, providing elite talent to companies globally. He was a founding managing partner of East Labs, a leading seed stage venture capital fund based in Ukraine. And he was formerly a vice president in venture capital at Spencer Trask Ventures in NYC. There's a whole bunch of other things that he has done in his life, including lived nomadically for about the last eight years. All of that we get into this podcast, but especially the augmented reality of Superworld, blockchain, and everything that he's up to with production and franchises. As always, Marist Nation, if you do find value in this podcast, all I ask is that you share it with a friend. I get a lot of value out of this podcast, so I really hope that you guys are too. So without further ado, let's dive into the 65th episode of the Passion and Progress show with Rish Latlakar. What is up, Merce Nation? Javier Mercedes here for yet again another Passion in Progress show, where we talk to inspiring individuals and hopefully through hearing their stories, you too are motivated to go out and pursue your passions as well. And I could not be more excited to learn about the XR experience and AR, just all the things that are really pushing technology today with co-founder of Rogue Initiative and amazing app we'll get to talking about called Superworld, Rish Latlakar. How's it going? Great. Yeah, thanks so much uh, for having me. I'm really excited to uh, have this conversation and really appreciate the opportunity to share our stories. Yeah, so go ahead and give an overview of uh, Rogue Initiative and what you did with that, and then we'll go ahead and get into Superworld. I co-founded Rogue Initiative with my two co-founders, Pete Blumel, who I previously worked with. He produced Call of Duty, Modern Warfare Series, and Ghosts, and previously had worked with uh, at Amblin Entertainment, um, which is uh, Steven Spielberg's production studio, and um, along with my other co-founder, uh, Kathy Twig, who also came from DreamWorks and uh, MTV Films and Sony and other places. Um, and the vision of Rogue Initiative is to create uh, new original content um, that goes across uh, feature film, television, virtual reality, gaming, all the way to amusement park rides and toys. So essentially what we're doing is creating new original content and then creating franchises essentially that either start as a feature film and then you know do a game and a film and go into TV and go into a VR experience. And so really looking at ways to organically monetize uh, that new content in uh, a variety of mediums from the foundational elements of creating the content. You know, the, the convergence of Hollywood entertainment, linear entertainment, film and television, and interactive entertainment, um, you know, represents an opportunity. And that opportunity is what we're capitalizing on at Rogue Initiative, which is, you know, how do we from the ground up build content that is meant to be across all those mediums? And you know, we're lucky and fortunate to have as a production partner, partner Michael Bay, who's um, used to work with uh, uh, Pete. Your other co-founder? Uh, he's he's yeah, a, yeah, 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 he's our partner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my other co-founder is Pete. Yeah. Um, so Michael, as you know, is, is uh, well known for um, big action movies, um, Transformers, The Island, Armageddon, Pearl Harbor. <laughs> Um, and, uh, so, you know, we're, we're also in doing things in science fiction. Uh, Linda Opst is a partner and she's, she's a production partner and she's also done things movies like contact and interstellar. And so in the science fiction and, and action side, um, we're focused on, uh, creating new original content, um, that's again, meant to go across all those mediums and, and take advantage of that confluence of, uh, I would say the interactive world and the linear world and to be able to build a company that you, is utilizing technology to be able to create assets 
um, that can be used in a feature film and a game because those those mediums are coming together. If you look at a Call of Duty game, it looks like a lot like a movie, you know, an mm-hmm. action movie or Michael Bay movie. And if you watch a Michael Bay movie, there's so much computer graphics in there that it looks it could be a video game, right? And so really, that's that's kind of the opportunity there is you know can you can you reduce the typical risk uh, in terms of uh, capital um, that because you've 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 reduced the cost of production when you can when you can you know build all these things at once as well as um, build assets that can go across those mediums. So talk to me about what a typical project looks like, and it could be something that you're working with Michael Bay on or what have you. What is a, an, an example of something that you guys would put out? So if you look at what we've done so far, you know, the first thing that we worked on is called Crow, the Drowned Armory. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a uh, VR experience. It's on HTC uh, Vive. Uh, yeah. It's also on Oculus. You know, as an example, we're looking at you know making that into a TV show, you know moving it in, into other mediums. That's crazy. Maybe That's so cool. <laughs> a, a movie, yeah. And and so there's a big story world behind Crow, right? The what it, what it's about. That's an example of of something we've put out there so far. Um, we have other projects that we're working on that we've announced. If you if you go to uh, the website Rogan the Rogue Initiative dot com um, with Bay and and. Um, we have another project called the 716th that we've we've worked with uh, another producer uh, director on um, that we're also uh, looking to expand into other mediums and, and TV and other places. Um, right now, it's on Amazon Prime. It's mm-hmm. a short. You know, I think in terms of the model, again, it's really you know, are we are we able to um, produce or work with other producers? to find properties or create properties that we believe have legs to be able to, to go across all those mediums because that's that's the goal. You're on the cutting edge of mm-hmm. where these experiences are in terms of technology. When you approach other directors, producers for Rogue Initiative, how do you have that conversation? Like what what does that look like in terms of this will add value to whatever thing that you are building because of X, Y, and Z. The relationships that we have, um, and my you know co-founders Pete and Kathy have had um, from working uh, in Hollywood for many years, you know, are are, are very close relationships. Mm-hmm. And so it's a small world there, and and so um, you know a lot of the conversations are are are, are very through their network. <laughs> yeah, it's very warm conversations, and uh, you know I think. Uh, in general, I think in the industry, um, people realize that the the opportunity to uh, take a piece of, of of content and develop that content into so many more mediums is, um, you know, it the the timing and the ability to do that um, it, it makes it almost. Um, uh, impossible not to explore <laughs> yeah. those those opportunities, and so I think it's an easy conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, the question is 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 the you know how do you develop that content in the appropriate way so that it is um, I think uh, organically able to um, you know achieve what we'd like it to achieve in each of those areas. And part of that is you know we're producing uh, globally marketable. Uh, new original content productions. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, <clears throat> part of that is, you know, as an example, China is, is you know, the biggest media market in the world now, right? So uh, an average Bay movie makes a lot more money in, in China than it does in the U.S., right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so being able, as an example, being able to to make sure that, you know, as you develop a story, that there are elements of that story. Maybe there's characters that are included that are international um, and and to to be able to make sure that um, you're developing in a way that you know the the world is big enough to support a game and to support you know offshoots of that story and other things. So um, I think that's the nature of those conversations. Is yeah. it, 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 does this does this story um, will this story be able to be made into a, a franchise? And then again, as I said, um, I think the. The, the areas we focus on at this story at this stage is uh, action and science fiction type uh, content stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just heard that concept for the first time, but uh, in in terms of 
when you're creating a piece of content, if it really hits a specific market and you're making a second iteration or a third iteration of it, incorporating more of a different culture or some other subset or I guess uh, demographic yeah. <laughs> would be it would be the the term. And that way, when an audience sees a um, like, let's say, like a, a pillar of content, like the the main cornerstone would be the movie. And mm-hmm. if there is a uh, a black woman and then a white person and then like that, like you were saying, like an Asian mm-hmm. or something like that, mm-hmm. that's some character that each part of an audience can relate to. Yeah. I just heard that concept for like the first time. But then mm-hmm. after re- um, listening to it and digesting it, I was like, oh, man, that's like how some of the more global types of content really capitalize on something like that yeah yeah no it is uh it is interesting that you know we live in a very i live globally as as you know and we've we've talked about this uh nomadically around the world and you know i it's it's amazing to see um you know the appreciation that uh people all over the world have for uh hollywood and hollywood content content that comes out of the united states um but at the same time you know i think other markets are are getting to be um, more sophisticated on the media production side and, mm-hmm. you know, to create globally marketable uh, properties. And you're seeing that out of China and India and other places. Um, and, and so I think, you know, we as, you know, uh, Hollywood have to be very cognizant of the fact that, and, I, we, and you know, I think, I think this is already happening in, in, a, in a very big way for sure. But, you know, it's, it's, it's also, it's happening on the finance side too. So mm-hmm. a lot of, a lot of capital from uh, Asia and other places is coming into Hollywood to make sure that, you know, um, that, that, that those content, that those productions are, um, you know, very international as well. So mm-hmm. it's kind of happening in both ways on the, on the development side of the story, but also, um, on the, on the business side financially, um, because we realize that the world is very interconnected and, and that the audience is very global. So what was your decision to live nomadically? So um, I, uh, my background is uh, I, I did my career. I was, uh, I grew up in Texas, actually. We're in Austin right now, but I grew up in Houston. I went to Rice University and I've been gone for 20 years uh, living around the world. It's a long time. It's like, yeah. is Texas still home to you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a long time. It's a long time, but it's good to be back. I was just mm-hmm. having a conversation about Whataburger, uh, which I love. Um, mm-hmm. So it's nice to be close to a Whataburger when I need one. Um, but uh, th- those things in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, But my story is I went to grad school in Chicago, consulting and then investment banking in New York, uh, Wall Street. And then um, I had an idea to um, start a venture capital fund in in Europe. Um, So I did VC in New York, uh, venture capital for a few years, and then went to Eastern Europe, to Ukraine, um, just as a, hey, wouldn't it be cool to start a venture capital fund in the emerging market? When you think of VC, you think of Ukraine. (laughs) Well, I thought thought Eastern Europe or South America was Mm -hmm. my idea. And um, I went to Eastern Europe first, um, traveled all around. Uh, I went to Ukraine, Russia, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Belarus, Moldova, and ended up deciding on Ukraine. Um, it actually, you know, uh, loved it. I mean, I love it there. It's actually my spiritual home, uh, mm-hmm. Ukraine and that part of the world. I speak Russian now, but at that point it didn't speak any Russian, didn't know, it practically didn't know anyone who lived there. Now I know, you know, so many friends over there mm-hmm. in that part of the world. Um, but to answer your question about like how, how did that, you know, living nomadically thing happen? Um, once I started living in Europe and I started this venture capital fund, which took about a year and a half to, to make happen yeah I got introduced to someone and ended up starting a fund called east labs um we met, ended up investing in about 35 companies out there and um you know really helped build that ecosystem but um then i was an american living in europe right in eastern europe and and then i thought you know you know why why not check out other places like well you know did this in eastern europe um and it's cool living overseas um, what about Southeast Asia? What about South America? And and essentially, what happened was, um, I I got connected with um, a colleague and a friend um, who had just started a company called TopTal. Mm-hmm. Uh, TopTal is a, uh, a a network of elite talent. 
Uh, it's a talent outstaffing company that connects companies to elite developers, finance people, and designers and project managers. Sounds like a good person to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and and TopTal is a company that connects those people, mm -hmm. um, backed by Andreessen Horowitz. And um, so I ended up uh, joining that team and was kind of the first business development guy there. Um, and we scaled TopTal, you know, helped help kind of scale that. And so the point is, is TopTal, we built distributed. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it's still, it's one of the top companies that really promotes this remote distributed workforce lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. The talent economy. And, and TopTal is, is how, you know, we started living kind of globally. So I started living in Asia and South America. And, and, you know, the point of TopTal is you can live anywhere you want. No one, you know, there's no, there's, it doesn't matter. Live, you can live on, you know, in San Francisco and work out of a coffee shop or on the beach in Bali. Mm -hmm. And it was at TopTal where, you know, I learned how do you, how do you build and scale a company and do it remotely? And, and what are the advantages of that? And um, so my, my answer to you is, that in a in a very quick fashion, I learned that um, personally and professionally, living globally for 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 me had so many positive um, outcomes, and to mm -hmm. be able to see and know the world, know you know, uh, make friends like yourself and, mm -hmm. and 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 people that. You know, you, you go to house parties all over the world, or you're, you know what I <laughs> yeah, mean. Yeah. And so you're 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 a native, and mm -hmm. um, so that was that was kind of what sealed the deal. Once once we you know started living more globally and understood just how amazing and wonderful it is to get to know cultures and languages, and you know know the local gym and the grocery store, but know that in so many places. So it started off more of a as an intellectual idea. Wouldn't it be cool? you know, mm -hmm. when I was living in Ukraine to think, wow, wouldn't it be cool to live around the world and get to know places around the world in a very intimate way, like a native, like a local. And that's, that's kind of what, what I've been doing, what we've been doing now for my family and I, uh, for the last, uh, you know, uh, seven or eight years after living, you know, started in Ukraine 10 years ago. So I feel like your brain would be firing on all cylinders because you have to, moving from culture to culture, I'm assuming you have to get adapted to whatever that culture is. Then you have to start learning the language and yeah. uh, in what you're doing with your companies. Mm -hmm. I'm also assuming you talk to a lot of people. Yes. How, how has that yeah. uh, benefited you? I, I feel yeah. like you're a person that goes and seeks out and um, wants to engage with a lot of people. How has yeah. traveling around really benefited you in your business? Yeah, you know, it's 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 pretty uh, amazing um, the amount of, of benefits, uh, you know, you can you can gain from the 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 relationships um the strong relationships that you can build mm -hmm. when you're on the ground right yeah yeah because you know a lot of people and and again this is an actually even a deeper way to kind of think about what you're talking about yeah. which is a lot of people define where they're from by this you know 20 mile radius and it's called a city or whatever right <laughs> they're like oh i'm from austin or yeah 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 houston or you know, wherever. Right. And I, I always, you know, to, to, um, just, just to be open, I always felt a little bit weird about that long time ago, mm -hmm. like even when I was little, I yeah. was like, cause you know, I, I was born in India. I was growing up in Houston. You know, I traveled a fair amount with my fan, my parents and stuff when I was little. And I was like, you know, I, I want to be from that place. I want to <laughs> be from that place, you know? And, and, and so, you know, finally, you know, having now been doing this and living this kind of global kind of nomadic, um, lifestyle, um, you know, it's kind of reconfirmed my belief that people don't have to, um, kind of think of themselves psychologically or, you know, uh, kind of think of their life even based on this 20 mile square uh, radius of mm -hmm. location and that their identity and who they are and how they think and what they want to want they want to learn or 
um, what they want to experience, um, it can be very global because, you know, it doesn't take that long to go from, you know, Austin to Kiev as an example, right? I mean, it, you go to sleep, you wake up and you're there, which is pretty amazing. And that's getting faster. And with Hyperloop and other things coming mm -hmm. down the line, that's going faster. Um, but to, you know, to address the question of these relationships and the business kind of yeah. positivity that's come out of it, um, it, it's all kind of related, which is once you are in a place and that person sitting across from you realizes that you are a local because mm -hmm. <laughs> you live there and that's where you're from. You're not on a trip, yeah. you know, and most people don't even realize that I'm actually still on a trip, right? They're, <laughs> they're, you know, they're For like life. in any, yeah, in any place they're like, Oh, okay. So you're in Austin. You're, you're an Austinite. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, next year we'll probably be back in Europe. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, 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 and would like to be right. And so that's the point is that, being a local, you really get these strong relationships and then it you never really leave either. That's the other thing that most people don't realize or maybe maybe they do realize and because they don't know that you were on a trip in the first place. Mm -hmm. So they assume that you're still in that. They just haven't seen you for a while. Right. Yeah. And then any place that you really like, um, like Austin, for example, which, you know, will be uh, a headquarters of Superworld as well mm -hmm. along with L.A., but. Um, so, you know, it becomes kind of a part of your your heart and your, you know, part of your journey that you revisit many, many times for different reasons. Maybe it's a business reason. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's a, per, you know, personal reason because you, you like the place or the culture or the lifestyle. But um, I would say the biggest takeaways are, you know, when you're a local, you really get brought in in a way that can't really happen typically if you're just traveling to a place mm -hmm. and that compounds and so this is also really interesting is that you know i would say the first three to five years or whatever you don't notice it as much because you're going to these different places and you know every time you're rebuilding kind of like oh you know i now have to get to know the grocery store and the yeah. gym and the language and who are the who are the people here i should know and that happens very organically but over time, after you've done it now, and we've done it in you know every almost every continent and many many cities, um, then it starts building up because then you're like, whoa, like I know all those people, like you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It, like you can think of your LinkedIn or something, and mm -hmm. you're like, whoa, these are you know like having been in Austin now mm -hmm. for the last almost twelve months. I know a lot of people in Austin really well, you <laughs> mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, and 12 months ago, I knew a, a handful. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, you, and you compound that, right? In yeah. New York and L.A. and Vegas and Miami and Bali and Thailand and, you know, Russia and Ukraine and Belarus and Western Europe and, you know, South America and boom, 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 boom. So it, it adds up. It's kind of cool. It sounds like I'm just I'm yeah. hot off the presses reading yeah. The Tipping Point. Have you ever read yeah, that? Yeah, I uh, have. It's, it's a great book. So uh, it sounds like you're a connector. Like you like you know people. And not only that, but you're also on the cutting edge. So you're, I, I forget the name of, or the term for the people, but you're like one of the innovators. And speaking of, let's go ahead and move into um, Superworld and what mm -hmm. you guys do with that app. So my co-founder, Max Woon, and I uh, launched Superworld a couple of years ago. So Max and I used to work together at another company on the YouTube platform. Uh, brilliant guy, uh, genius, um, mm -hmm. and just have a lot of respect for him. And, um, you know, we'd kept in touch and we saw um, Pokemon Go um, uh become the fastest company to a billion dollars. Now they're at 2 billion and, you know, doing really well. Um, we also noticed that there's 6.5 billion mobile phones that are AR enabled, augmented reality enabled. And that's the reason Pokemon Go could grow so fast because they had something that people wanted to, to interact with. And then there's a huge install base out there. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'd already been in VR and AR, you know, in with rogue initiative, um, being that that's also part of what we do there is produce VR content. So very familiar with, with that world. And, you know, Max and I got together. Um, Max has co-founded Xfire and sold it to Viacom. He's done fizzle sliver skid and tune star. Uh, he used to work in Stephen Hawking's department at Cambridge. So he's just a brilliant guy. And we were like, we were like, you know what? If what if if we can't build the next 
Pokemon Go. What if we build a place where the next thousand Pokemon Go's can get built onto, right? Mm -hmm. And so we built Superworld. So what is Superworld? So if I come to Austin and you happen to be out of town, you could tell me, Rish, you know what? Check out my world. And I could walk around and you've left me things, photos and videos in different places. You've left me messages at your favorite restaurant about what I should eat and drink, you know, like order the Merlot here or whatever. You've left me a hologram of yourself dancing on 6th Street at your favorite bar. Um, Basically, the digital land around you, around us, all over the world is completely personalizable by you. So I can see your world. You can see my world. We could see brands world. So Nike's world might have a shoe, a Nike shoe sitting on top of the lake, right? But Reebok in the same place might have a Reebok shoe if I want to see Reebok, right? So any specific spot in the digital land around us can have an infinite number of items. So think of each world as a filter on top of the real world, right? What you see. And so that could be described as Pokemon Go meets Foursquare. Pokemon Go is, you know, an analogy for, you know, putting digital objects around you, right, Uh, in augmented reality, right? Um, Foursquare is a data company, so instead of just locational data, think about, you know, XR data, which is VR and AR. So to be clear, you can go into VR from any place in Superworld as well, so it's not just AR. You can go into virtual worlds from anywhere, Um, but you think of those two concepts. And then the third part of Superworld is monopoly. And so what does that mean? It means you can buy the world. And what does that mean? Well, it means that you can buy Sixth Street or Times Square in New York or you know, Union Square in San Francisco. And people are buying the world. Um, and how does that work? Well, it's on the blockchain. And so what that means is, is that each plot of land is a unique digital asset. So if you buy 6th and Congress as an example, that is a unique digital object. It's kind of like a baseball card or a piece of art. There's only one of them. Do you understand? And so if you buy that, now you can reprice it to whatever you want. So anything unpurchased on Superworld is 0.1 Ether, which is about $22 right now. So you can buy a plot of land, 22 bucks on Superworld right now, un- unpurchased, right? And let's say, as an example, you buy 6th and Congress. That's that's actually already sold. A lot of downtown Austin's already bought up, but it's like you bought that, right? As an example, you could say, you know what? I bought that for 22 bucks. That should be worth a million dollars, right? It's a good plot of land. And so you can reprice it and now it's worth a million dollars on Super Bowl, right? And, and then we've opened up the land so other applications can build on top of the land as well. So it's not just Superworld, but you know anyone can connect into Superworld, connect to our data API, connect to our advertising network. And so we're building this ecosystem on top of the real world, XR ecosystem, AR, VR, MR, you know, and, and all of this is, is um, different than Facebook and Google because we're decentralized. I'm saying to you, you like Superworld, you like what we're doing here, buy some and then become a key stakeholder, right? And when you're a key stakeholder, you're getting a share of the commerce that's happening. So when you buy a plot of land, you're getting a share of the commerce that's happening on the plot of land that you own, right? And so unlike Facebook and Google, you can be, you know, be part of building Superworld. You're eventually, we're you know, giving give you give you some rights and privileges with that being a plot owner, a landowner, and so you know we're figuring how that is. But it's it's different. It's a completely different way of thinking about you know media, and we're building a, a decentralized media company. And you know, uh, uh, we will have artificial intelligence uh, in there. I'm a I'm also an advisor to Singularity Net, which is a decentralized artificial intelligence uh, platform uh, launched uh, by Ben Gertzel and, and my partners, uh, Cassio Penichin, um, as well as, um, you know, you could have virtual humans, virtual people, um, and virtual avatars. Um, so there's a lot of things in that ecosystem um, that make it really exciting. Hollywood content is an obvious um, way of, 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 of inputting uh, uh, data and information there. So there's there's a lot to Superworld, which makes it fun. 
I would ask a question, but yeah. after you give your spiel on Superworld, what's yeah. one of the ones that you get most often? <laughs> what, what, what do people normally ask you? You know, it's pretty funny because when I go into it, people, uh, they just, they get really excited. Mm -hmm. Like it, it is a very viral story just mm -hmm. naturally. People are enthralled when they hear the story of that it's actually reality right yeah i mean actually in a way it's kind of funny because you know sometimes as a joke i'm like oh i'm just kidding <laughs> i just made that up <laughs> yeah, yeah you know what i mean yeah. and then i'm like no i'm just I'm, I'm being serious that's actually real that's actually what we're building so um so in a way it's 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 very it, you know we're very we're very happy that people are excited about it and um, we're seeing, um, you know, you know, good traction in the fact that when people do understand what they're, what this is about, um, they're coming on board and buying, uh, properties. So our average paying users buying about, you know, $400 of digital land or like virtual land. Right. Um, which is, which is pretty awesome. Cause you're, you're like, wow, people are buying, you know, significant, you know, 13 plots of land on average, 400 bucks. And what's also cool about it um, is, you know, you can't just buy one plot of land. You can't, it's almost impossible. And I always, I tell people, I'm like, buy one plot of land. And, and what happens is, is, you know, someone will go on there, let's say, and they're like, okay, I'm going to buy part of Sixth Street as an example. And they buy that and they're like, Hmm, this is cool. Now I have Sixth Street and I've repriced it. And now it's worth, you know, 500K or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're like, hmm, like, why don't I buy my house? Or why don't I yeah. buy this other place in Manhattan or my, you know, favorite stadium, my sports stadium, or, you know, this museum I really like or this historical place, you know, the Taj Mahal or wherever, right? And mm -hmm. so people have these kind of, there's different reasons, right? And there, some of them aren't, aren't just based on how many people go to that place. Some of them are very nostalgic places. And so I think there is this real connection with understanding that there is this new property market on top of the real world. And you look at you look at companies like Fortnite, which just awarded you know three million dollars to someone who just won their competition, and esports and other things that are exploding. And you look at virtual worlds um, that have been around, like Second Life, and um, other worlds that are, are being created as well. But then you think about what if all of that was on top of the real world? So I didn't have to go to a virtual world; it's here right now. It's on top of the real world, and it's contextual around me. Um, a very famous AI scientist uh, and computer scientist that we're very close to named Stephen Wolfram um, commented, I get this in five seconds, literally. This, <laughs> this, was a, this, was a, this was an answer. This is a direct answer to your question. He's like, I get this. This is GPS for life. Mm -hmm. So I walk around and I get contextual information on what I'd want to know or what I, you know, what I need to know or whatever that is um, all around me. And whether it's, hey, my friend's sitting over there or I've been to this place before or this is how to, you know, go to the nearest restaurant or whatever it happens to be that you want to know, whether it's entertainment or education, um, that all of those things are possible. And that's that's kind of part of the vision is is that, you know, along with opening up the application so other apps can build on right consumer all the way to enterprise, you know, eventually would love to have, you know, cities like Austin build services onto Superworld because, you know, um, people are using the platform. And so there is a really big potential for how we think about it. Communications, uh, finance, uh, you know, I think that you, know, you look at the immersive uh, possibilities and how computing is going from having, you know, hardware like your phone to, you know, very soon going to glasses, right, with Apple, you know, just releasing a patent on this. Um, Magic Leap is one of the most well-funded startups in the in the AR hardware space. They're building uh, a software platform as well. With Superworld, we're we're hardware software platform agnostic, so mm -hmm. we're open to we're open to everyone. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I I am very supportive of the AR community in general. I have a lot of friends in the AR community, so um, we're very open to bolstering and, and being a place where if you are producing AR and or XR VR, put it on Superworld. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very inclusive message. Yeah. Uh, it's a very positive message. I mean, you know, um, 
you know, it's super world because I want it to be your super world. What is that for you? There's so many issues with, you know, Facebook and other of these centralized companies that have algorithms and other issues. Um, and, and what I'd like to do is, you know, be able to make a platform that you feel like one you could own, you can, you know, be a stakeholder in, but also create this world around you that, that really is meaningful and purposeful for whatever that means to you. In terms of information, yeah. when you go out yeah. in AR, it sounds like you are in and of itself solving a challenge that in your own life, living nomadically, yeah. you are expediting the process of getting to know the area by yeah. automatically having the information available to you. And say the glasses were a thing, yeah. like a, a, a well-established thing in today's society. Yeah. If you were going out, I'm assuming in, you're looking at an AR type of world, Yeah, you already get that information in an instant. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It, it, but it, you can turn it off if you want to, right? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And just discover it, you know, not get information too, which mm -hmm. is the beauty of that. What about over congestion? Mm -hmm. Like uh, if people have, because I could see if it, um, when it, when it does progress, just if people put whatever onto the platform and then you're walking around and then there's just like billboards everywhere. How, yeah. What do you, how do you, this is just me like spitballing, but like, yeah. it, do you foresee that as a big problem? Well, so, I mean, the way we're, we're creating super world mm -hmm. um, is, you know, again, these are filters on the real world. Right. And so there, there could be millions of millions of filters, right. Mm -hmm. In any location. Right. Meaning there could be AR around you. And as yeah. you, as you correctly noted, you know, if there's millions of brands and there are putting stuff everywhere, you know, you would get all of these things. However, the way we we are building Superworld is, um, you know, you you can decide what what filter you want to look at. So if I just want to look at, you know, your filter mm -hmm. of the world, then I might see a few things, you know, whatever you've left for me. Right. I got you. Um, and 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 if I want to add to that filter, I want to see what you've left for me. But I also want to see what, you know, maybe I don't know, the city of Austin wants me to see. Right. Then there's two filters there. Right. And so, boom, it enriches more content around me. Yeah. But you can turn anyone on or off or see specific things or whatever you want. Right. So even as someone who's creating content, you can make content specific only for one person, a group, everyone. So every every piece of content, even right down to that can be you know, turned on and off for who, who is able to even see that that exists and interact with it. Right. So again, this content isn't just static. It's, these are interactive things, right? Games, yeah. you know, um, whatever. So, so again, my answer to your question is, is even though there will be millions of millions of millions of, uh, of AR around you eventually as this builds out, um, you, you could filter it down to just, my world or your world or yeah. and, and make it as and 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 also part of that is you know who are you following what what brands do you like you know where are you proximity wise like in the world right what's there um and and then i would say the last thing is is you know advertisers in super world have the ability um to get to know you know uh, users, but we, we got to be very careful. And I think Apple has done a really great job about this in terms of data and privacy and other things. Um, and you know, I think they're, they're really leading the charge as well on the AR side with AR kit, um, which is their software. And, um, you know, I, I think that, um, we, we want to make sure that again, you have a super world and I think a super world is having a world that where you have, you know, uh, data integrity and you have privacy and you're able to create a world that you enjoy. And I, I think that's, um, you know, not congruent with you being barraged by ads you don't want to yeah. see or, you know, uh, information that you're not interested in. So we don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want a world where you're being barraged by anything you don't want. That's crazy. Yeah. So in the information that you have, yeah, I, I, I'm foreseeing in the future that just because the nature of 
say it be glasses or something like that, yeah. you have 24 seven access to whatever the person is looking at. And then I, I don't know how the mm -hmm. technology works, but I'm assuming it calculates whatever the eye is doing to mm -hmm. do the augmented reality things. Mm -hmm. I, I heard uh, recently that ESPN was doing this thing where they, if they would market their ads mm -hmm. according to what a specific city might be feeling. So if mm -hmm. the Browns mm -hmm. lost a game, mm -hmm. then those ads would reflect to um, like, well, we're, we're really team, like we're always behind our team and everything. But if they yeah. win a game, then it's all about like, everybody's feeling happy and like they would then target the ads that way. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different level mm -hmm. in something that you're talking about where you go around and then if um, it's going to get to the point where they would be able to calculate all right this person is feeling x amount of mood mm -hmm. just the data alone is yeah. mind-boggling <laughs> uh, when it comes yeah. to ar and how you interact with the world is do you yeah. do you foresee that kind of where it's going yeah i mean and again that's why i said that you know we we really want to be cognizant of, of building this the right way mm -hmm. and and you know again that goes to um, being decentralized so we all are kind yeah. of involved in building it um, that's kind of very important to us and that's why we're you know decentralized on the blockchain um, but on the data side yeah that's that's also a very very important thing and there's a movie that just recently came out which you might have heard of or seen called the great hack uh, it's on Netflix um, it's about you know uh, the whole uh, Cambridge Analytica and, mm -hmm. and, and Facebook data and other other things that occurred in terms of you know, being able to uh, basically, you know, possibly change and influence human behavior, right? Yeah. In, in a way that um, um, may or may not have, 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 have been correct, right? It, yeah. It, 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 I mean, clearly. So, um, you know, I think that as we are moving into this immersive world, that we have to be really careful of um, making sure that we are maintaining our integrity as individuals um, because you know the the immer immersive world um, is uh, it, it could be anything right <laughs> it could be anything really and so you, 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 you could people could get lost in it in a, in a negative way or be influenced um, very mm -hmm. easily. And so, you know, again, at Superworld, I, I think those are things that we really think about. I mean, we're, we, we do this because we love it, right? I mean, yeah. that's why Max and I built Superworld and, and that's why it's called Superworld. And so I, I really want to make sure that it's a place that you love and it's your world and it's wonderful and beautiful and whatever that, you know, whatever that means for you. Yeah. Um, and I think a big part of that is making sure that your data and your information and how you are interacting with those other um, organizations or people or whatever in the world is done in a way that really is positive for you. Right. Um, so that's kind of, but it is a very interesting and, and, uh, dynamic kind of conversation but you know again i see again i think you know i have a very optimistic view mm -hmm. of the fact that immersive computing is going to be so positive for humanity right i just spoke at future frontiers um uh, a conference in Austin that took place a few months ago about the future XR world and how that's going to impact humanity. And my thesis there is that, you know, in the future, you're not going to think of the world and the digital world. It's like the physical world, the digital world. It's going to be the world. And um, to to you seeing digital content or virtual, con you know, virtual reality or AR, MR, all these, it's going to be, you know, all all part of the world. Mm -hmm. And so kids in the future are going to be living as if it's there's no differentiation. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in a way that that can be very positive. Right. Other people could see that as being very negative. Right. Like, whoa, what does that mean? I'm not able to spend time outside and feel the grass or right yeah. be on the beach. But I don't think it's 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 kind of mutually exclusive in that way where I think that the digital world could be very positive for, you know, 
I do want to sit on the beach and learn about history. And I could, you know, watch a, an AR, you know, uh, reenactment of a historical event while I'm sitting back and, you know, having a, uh, a, a pina colada or whatever, a margarita. In a, th- in a 3D in, environment as opposed a, to on a yeah, 2D, 2D at, screen. Or a, in a book, right? Mm-hmm. Or whatever, right? I mean, and and believe me, reading a book is great. I read a lot of books and I probably read a lot more books on my iPhone now, right? And And so, but if I could see that in a way that was, you know, in front of me in a in an immersive way wow can you imagine how kids can learn that how much information can be absorbed and how quickly people can really understand that whether that's biology or oh, yeah, history for sure. or for sure. you know so i think that's super positive for our for our humanity whether you're talking about you know computer engineering or you know uh, biotechnology or even more complex subjects right when you can see the dna and you can see the code and you could you know so i have a very very positive view of of the future of xr oh yeah for sure i think it, yeah. obviously that's where it's going yeah um i just like being a youtuber and getting yeah. the analytics with youtube uh it's kind of crazy if you can di- decipher what's really going on once you mm-hmm. get a big enough data set and yeah. you can tell user behavior when you're watching a video yeah. it's like kind of like oh because of x y and z that's why people either clicked off a video or they were scrolling during a video or any of that kind of stuff but if you take that to the xr realm it's like it's awesome yeah what do you think is i'm just because i'm like just finished the book but what do you think Mm -hmm. is the tipping point Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. super world and Mm -hmm. uh xr or just whatever it will become like when it when it is a part of the world what do you think it needs to be like as pokemon go was to uh augmented reality for and how it just grew really quick yeah what do you think needs to happen in terms of your guys's app where at just out of nowhere, like you guys get an influx of content and other things of that nature. Yeah. So first of all, I mean, just to go into a little bit of our strategy, you know, we're we're kind of uh, we're we're a seed stage company. We're mm-hmm. we're we're growing uh, in terms of traction, as I mentioned, on the real estate. Um, we're kind of upgrading our application, which is in an open beta state right now um, yeah. on on iPhone and Android. Um, but we're upgrading that to be what I mentioned, which is, you know, Pokemon Go for brands and influencers. Um, so we're, you know, signing up brands right now. So if there's brands out there that want to start doing things in augmented reality, definitely reach out mm-hmm. to us. We'd love to talk to you and influencers as well. Um, you know, imagine being able to sell digital products in a virtual world or in the real world, <laughs> yeah. um, as well as being able to share with your influencers or with other influencers or your followers and say, hey, check out my world. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and and being able to to get people to go to locations as well as interact with you in a in a virtual or augmented way, um, which represents so many possibilities. So, I, I, you know, I, I think um, the real estate side is also very interesting because not only are people able to buy real estate and sell it and be part of, as I said, a key stakeholder of the platform. So it gives them a completely different feeling mm-hmm. as to um, Superworld versus Facebook or Instagram or any other yeah. platform because they they own part of it, right? Yeah, yeah. And and they've repriced their land and now they have you know a couple of million bucks of Superworld land or more, right? And and so the point is is that back to tipping point, which I love Malcolm Gladwell's books um, and have read many of them. Um, you know, I think it's a matter of you know that story being told in a in a very viral way from from users, and I think that's happening, and, mm-hmm. and I see it and I feel it. You know, very anecdotally, I talk to people about Superworld, and then they, you know, I see this thing happen in their eyes like every every day, and and they tell other people, and I'll go places, and people come up to me and say, hey, I, by the way, I've been buying some of your buying some Superworld and buying land, and um, today I was on the phone. I'm in startup school, which is a white combinator thing um, mm-hmm. that they put on, and one of the guys was, you know, just heard about it, and he he was like, oh, you know. Uh, I'm from Sacramento and he goes to Sacramento, I guess, in Superworld to, on the map. And 
he's like, oh man, my house is already bought up. And I was like, <laughs> really? I was like, I was like, I didn't realize. And he's like, yeah, a lot of Sacramento has been bought up. And I was like, whoa, Sacramento? I had no idea. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because I'm not monitoring like where you know I assume like certain cities are you know kind of attractive Still open. to people yeah. and stuff. So yeah, it was it was kind of surprising to me. So it was to him, it was like, whoa, it kind of proved that case. So I think you know that's one thing, and that's kind of a FOMO kind of thing. Like, whoa, like what is this? Like, you know, yeah. back to 2009 is a, you know, a, a, a finite digital asset um, that is, you know, at a pretty good price back in 2009 called Bitcoin. Right. And yeah. so um, so people see that as an opportunity back to domain names in 95. If you could buy cars dot com or, mm-hmm. you know, uh, right. Or babies dot com, whatever it is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Austin dot com. And so. I think there there is this kind of am I should I get some of this now even though I didn't I don't know what Bitcoin is but now I do right you know <laughs> yeah, yeah and so it's kind of like people see that and they're like hmm I get it there's a finite amount of it it's in Super World y- you guys might be crazy but I might as well <laughs> <laughs> I might as well get some right mm-hmm. and so that's kind of the that's the psychology and then plus the other part of it is they're, they're so incentivized, right? Because now they're they're a key stakeholder. One of the things I tell people, and this is actually a cool new marketing thing that we're doing very recently, is you know, there's a lot of people who don't know anything about blockchain or crypto, right? They, yeah. they don't own a wallet. They don't own any crypto. And so now we're saying, you know what? Take 20 minutes and for almost 20 bucks or something, right? Point one Ether is about 22 bucks or something. You'll get a wallet. You'll get some ether. You'll buy some Super World, and now you have a ERC seven twenty one, which is a, a token mm-hmm. in Super World. And so for twenty minutes, now you got an education in blockchain and crypto, and you're on it, right? Yep. And so in a way, it's kind of like a you know Robin Hood, the app, which is kind of democratizing investing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and other apps in that space. So it's similar. It's kind of like you know, how do you how do you get into this world and, and get onto blockchain and crypto and do so? And so I think that's part of your question, which is the getting to this tipping point is when, you know, our, our users are sharing a story they're very passionate about, um, are on it and are getting value from it. And that's our goal is to, you know, provide provide um, users and, and stakeholders and everyone in this ecosystem, whether it's developers that want to build onto Superworld, advertisers, um, users, influencers, to all really get value, feel that value, understand the mission, feel the love, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it's all about the love, honestly, man. That's uh, that's kind of why, that's why I'm creating Superworld. That's why Max and I are doing this, is we, we, we think that this is going to improve the world. For sure. The, there's one specific question though with the real estate and then creating your own world. If yes. you own the real estate, yep. doesn't that null and void the idea that if you turn off other worlds, then like if you turn off all the other worlds, what's the point of owning the real estate if they can now do whatever they want to on that other world? If that makes sense. Yeah, I'll explain. Okay. I'll explain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is a good question. So what does it mean to own the real estate? It mm-hmm. means that you're owning, you know, a uh, hundred meter by hundred meter digital, you know, virtual block of land, right? Yeah. All the way up and down too. If you could be like underground or something, it's yeah. part of that you know, longitudinal, latitudinal block, Mm -hmm. right? If you can think of that. And so you are getting a share of commerce that happens in anyone's digital, you know, filter on the world. So it's it's your world, my world, Coca-Cola's world, world, any any of the brands, any of the commerce, advertising, transactions, digital products. So in that square block or whatever that you you've purchased, you're getting everyone's worlds. Even if you don't want to see any of them yourself as a user, mm-hmm. the, the real estate, as an owner of the real estate, you're getting the commerce and any of the share of that in any of the worlds, right? Okay. And so anyone can post anything anywhere, right? Yeah. And so what does that mean? It means that when you own the land, it doesn't mean that you can block people from doing things there. Mm-hmm. No, not at all. Anyone can do anything anywhere. Remember, what you see is only based on what you want to see. So it's not like you have to see, you know, something you don't want to see. It might be there, but it's there in some other filter, right? That you're just not accessing, right? But if you own the land, you're getting the commerce, a share of the commerce in any of those filters. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. So that's it. 
I, it's pretty simple. I see yeah. the potential of right now high places that like New York City and Austin, other places like that. Like, yeah, there's a lot of people there. But then the idea of building a completely new infrastructure in a mm. cornfield, some random place that ends up being like the Burning Man of Super World, where people mm. go there every so often. I remember mm. um, I forget what that that project was where anybody could go into this website and draw anything for like mm-hmm. 24 hours. I think it was mm-hmm. like on Reddit or something like mm-hmm. that. And the, the, it was just a, uh, um, f- like it just looked cool because you had to, you could only put one pixel on that painting every like 10 minutes. Yeah. So people ended up like starting to get together and they were like, Oh, like, Hey, let's try and do, I don't know the American flag. So people would like start to draw the American flag, but everybody had to start getting together and talking to each other in order to do it because you could only do X amount of pixels per person. And there was a, like, there's, um, there's a time lapse of it somewhere on YouTube, but there's other people that like try and overtake that because they want to draw their own thing. And it just becomes this big real estate, like, I don't know, land grab, which I could see something like that happening with Superworld, mm-hmm. where if a whole bunch of stuff is already bought in one big place, then in some smaller place, a whole bunch of people get together and they're like, you know what, let's just make our own city. And then all of a sudden you could have like literally people living there <laughs> in, uh-huh. a, in another city. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think this kind of touches on the concept of, you know, if you own a plot of land, um, are there things that you can have as, as I said, privileges or rights on that land mm-hmm. that give you some priority, right? And that's some things that we're thinking about, which is, you know, let's say, for example, you don't get sixth in Congress, which is, you know, very prime real estate in Austin, yep. but you get some, you know, parking lot somewhere, I don't know, right? Yep. Or some field somewhere. Well, is there a way that you can, you know, add augmented reality, um, maybe an amusement park or some kind of educational, you know, uh, experiences or whatever it is, right? A, a Halloween thing or whatever, yeah, I don't yeah, know, yeah. onto that field, right? And so people can come there and right now they do this with their phones, like going to see Pokemons or something, yeah, yeah, but now yeah. they're going to see your experience. And they're and, and and ostensibly what you're doing is you're creating more value to that field because mm-hmm. now you got people going to that field to see this thing that you posted there. It's yeah. on that field, right? Yeah. And to be clear, you could actually put that field in a million places all over the world at the same time, and you don't have to own the real estate, by the mm-hmm. way. Okay. Just to be clear, but if you own that real estate, now you're getting a share of the commerce as well. So you could, for example, you know on every property you own in your filter, whatever, if it's a personal filter or a company filter, put augmented reality there that causes people to want to go there Mm -hmm. and create transactions there or to watch something there or to or to have an experience there or play a game there so like, now i'm just trying to so, comprehend it My yeah right exploding so, right now <laughs> so you're essentially quote unquote developing your land now. yep yeah just mm-hmm. like a real estate developer might say i'm gonna buy a field and put a mall there or put a store mm-hmm. there or, or an, you know an apartment complex or a, a community or some sort right yeah. so you, you're, you're adding value to digital land and so, yeah, that's that's kind of also something that we we think a lot about and which would be cool. Yeah, I think you guys will continue to develop the product and somebody's going to come up with some some sort of idea and then it'll be completely out of left field. And you'd be like, well, I guess that's what we're going to be using the app for. Like, like just I, there's like so much potential with what you're talking about that I feel like there's other things that you guys can't even comprehend right now yeah. that will be developed onto it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's open, right? <laughs> it's, it's, that's the point. So we yeah. want, we want people to build on top of it. And, and, you know, again, we're, we're, we're software agnostic, we're platform agnostic, we're right. hardware agnostic. So we want everyone to be able to access our augmented reality, virtual reality, XR in in Superworld, and um, but I think you're exactly right. Is we there's so many opportunities, and 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 really, it's uh, you know once we kind of get a few or one or two to to hit, which is what we're working on now. Um, and I've had conversations with people who are like, hey, you know what? This is perfect for real estate. 
you need mm -hmm. we just need to press a button here and now you're gonna see what walking around a house looks like in this area or, or whatever right and you can yeah. populate that on a map pretty quickly mm -hmm. so there's a lot of things that we could do onto that map of the world which is owned by all of us <laughs> yeah. which is beautiful i think right mm -hmm. um potentially and so it's uh uh yeah it's it's pretty exciting you know mm -hmm. and I, I have so many interests and i i travel around the world and you know i think there's there's so many things under the sun out there and there's so many creative people around um so i'm always it's always very exciting to me to hear you know enthusiasm around um mm -hmm. the different things that can be done it sounds like your initial funding for the app is through the real estate how else do you plan on monetizing the, um what you're doing yeah sure so um the real estate is 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 one product so you can mm -hmm. buy and sell real estate um and and besides that you know there are opportunities for brands and companies and other entities to um, create experiences um, that our users can interact with so you know the analogy there is pokemon go for brands right mm -hmm. so hey coca-cola or some brand you know says hey look you know what we've left you you know 10 coca-cola bottles around the city go find them all and win a car, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, Nike says, hey, go and collect every rare Nike shoe that's around the world and you'll get that shoe mailed to you. Be the first one to find it, right? Okay. Can you imagine the um, the cool kind of experiences that, you know, whether it's a, it's a consumer product brand or an educational company or, um, you know, uh, anything under the sun, really. So there's opportunities to create experiences there mm -hmm. um, that brands um, can, um, you know, pay pay to pay to uh, to 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 build and and to put into Superworld and and to um, really understand the engagement that they're getting with their super fans and and customers that are are new to them. Um, so that's another uh, revenue opportunity. The other thing, um, which is pretty, and, and that can apply to influencers as well, yep. right? So brands and influencers, I'd, I'd say, are kind of in a similar bucket. And then I would say the third thing is, is you know, again, digital, digital products and digital goods um, and unique digital items. Um, uh, and, you know, for example, you know, in Superworld, you can go into a virtual world, right? So an influencer can say, hey, why don't you check out my apartment? And you can walk into someone's apartment and imagine that apartment having, you know, Louis Vuitton paying, you know, Kim Kardashian to put uh, a, a, a one of a kind purse in her closet or something, mm -hmm. right? And then when you buy that purse, that is the only digital purse of that model. Or think about a Ferrari or digital yeah, yeah, car. Yeah. You could be like, oh, yeah, I'm the one who has that that one Ferrari or whatever mm -hmm. it is, right? So there's such, there's a whole market um, for what are called non-fungible tokens on the blockchain um, or ERC-721 on Ethereum. So I'm getting technical. But essentially what that is is unique digital objects that are immutable or transferable that can be owned and sold. Um, and, and so that's another area that we're really interested in is being able to do that on top of the real world or in virtual world. So that, that's three of the things, but, you know, as you can imagine, there's, you know, lots of ways to, um, whether it's the data or, um, um, you know, games and, and yeah, yeah. freemium kind of things that can be done here that, um, I think can, can help monetization. So. Um, at the end of the day, it's about creating, I think, a wonderful experience for users that they get value from and, and, and are engaged with. And again, being very cognizant of the fact that we want it to be a super world. So you want to be a place that you want to spend time in in a positive way. Yeah, get the, uh, your users coming back on a regular basis kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. Um, two things I ask uh, each guest at the end of each podcast. The sure. first one is, which I think you kind of already um, answered, but mm -hmm. I'll ask it again. Why do you do what you do? Yeah, you know, again, um, you know, it's it, it, being an entrepreneur uh, can be, you know, uh, very exhilarating. Um, it can be also very challenging, right? And I think that at the end of the day, you got to figure out your why. And I think that's what your question addresses. So, mm -hmm. you know, my why is that I'd like to um, always create. Um, I'm, I, you know, I think I've realized over the years that I am a creator um, or a creative, uh, however you want to characterize that. But um, I, I, I get, I, I get 
um, a lot of uh, you know, satisfaction and fulfillment from being able to create, whether it's art or photography, I do fashion photography as well. And, um, uh, you know, so creating, creating is very important to me. So always be creating, um, how, how I always want to impact the world in a positive way. Um, so that's something else that really drives me is how, how can the things I create really help the world? Mm-hmm. Um, and then third of all is to enjoy every moment with my friends and family. And so I have a lot of fun and enjoy that and just be really fulfilled and happy. Um, And I think that those three things for me kind of all connect, Um, meaning, um, you know, if you can if you can find that why, which in this case for me is is to build and create and do things in a very positive way for the world and enjoy myself. It's 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 an awesome positive loop. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, so that's kind of what drives me is being able to do that. And and that's kind of how I uh, look for look for projects or look for, you know, people to work with and other things is you know, find, find people that I enjoy working with who are, who are positive and, and people that I enjoy building with and, and to build things that again are going to empower and, and improve the world and at the same time be very um, uh, aware of, of making sure that I'm, you know, grateful um, for what I have and, you know, my family and friends and, and, and things like that. So those are, those are the things um, that awesome. I, care, I care about. Yeah. Last question yeah. is in order to get from let's say before you even went and started living nomadically yeah. to where you're at now, what yeah. are some bits of advice that you'd give to people to um, yeah. get to where you're at now? Yeah. No, I think that's a, that's a great, um, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I think that the, the context of anyone's life um, oftentimes uh, is the reason why they do anything, right? Whatever it is, it's it's based on who, you know where we are and who's around us and how, where we grew up and you know our friends and other things. And so, um, I think that um, one of the you know I'm, I was just with Tony Robbins or seeing Tony Robbins last week, and and he's a teacher of mine for 25 years now, and I really love um, the things that he talks about, and he talks about um, you know, uh, a few things, but one of those is, um, really kind of understanding, um, you know, who, who is around you and how, how are you thinking and how are you, you know, he calls it proximity is power. So, you know, being around people that can help you and help you grow and learn and become better. And, and, and I think that's an important way of, of, of achieving whatever it is that you want to achieve, right? Whether it's, podcasting or XR or, you know, film or television or, you know, any, anything, you know, any pursuit sports, I think it's really finding a group or someone who's doing it at a very high level and, you know, not being afraid to reach out to them. So I would say a little boldness is, is very important and, um, not having that fear. I think fear is a thing that really stops people from a lot of things that they want to do in their life. And so removing fear, Finding people that are doing things that you want to do, reach out to them, learn from them, model them, be around them, and um, you know, tr- try to have that uh, proximity as well as um, you know, again, to um, to to also, uh, I think, to have fulfillment as well, which mm-hmm. I think is a big piece of all of this, is to make sure that um, you know, as Tony says, try to live in a beautiful state always and. You know, I think that trying to um, do that and be happy and making sure that what you're doing is is um, for you very fulfilling and making sure you have that fulfillment. Um, I'd say those are the two important lessons. And, and this is not for me. This is from Tony Robbins <laughs> yeah, yeah. himself. But, you know, there's a science of achievement and a science of fulfillment and really having sure you have both of those things in your life. Um, I think is a, is a key to um, making sure that you know you can kind of do things that you want to do and, and be happy about those things. So that would be the biggest lesson for me. Uh, yeah. If people want to figure out more about you and Superworld yeah. and all the other things, where do they yeah. go? Uh, LinkedIn, uh, uh, Rish Lotlikar, H R I S H L O T L I K A R. I'm on Facebook under the same name, um, under Instagram, Rish Lotlikar. Um, and, uh, you know, superworldapp.com uh, app.com, 
is the is the place to go to find Superworld and get on the real estate. The real estate's only sold on the browser at this point, so web browser and mobile browser. So that's a great place to learn about all the things I'm, I talked about in terms of augmented reality real estate. Uh, Rogue Initiative is at theroganitiative.com. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, I'm pretty much on social media, so would love to connect and please feel free to reach out. I'm, I'm pretty accessible and always open to, to talk and, and learn and, and collaborate. So I uh, would love to talk to any of your fans. Um, what, what, what yeah. city are you looking at next? Uh, probably Europe. Um, we're thinking maybe Croatia or Portugal. Love um, that. Yeah, <laughs> but we don't know. It's very organic. <laughs> Yeah. Just like, well, I yeah. think I'm just going to pick up and go to this next spot. Yeah, that's where I'm going. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> funny. It's, it's uh, you know, um, people sometimes are like, oh, man, I got to move across town or something like that, right? And we're like, oh, yeah, we're going to move from Thailand to Austin. We're going like, to go across an ocean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like, you know, five hours of packing or something, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So we... Yeah, we're pretty mobile and it's fun. And, you know, I think you, you there's the whole minimalism concept that yep. really helps there as well. But... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to do that, to be able to, to navigate the globe. But like, I think one should, I think mm -hmm. being able to have that ability or that at least psychological understanding that you can go to other places. Cause I think a lot of people feel like they can't and mm -hmm. they, and they end up, you know, for whatever reason, ending up staying in one spot and, and they always want to go somewhere else. So I, I'd say, you know, be open to that. Cause it's a lot easier than you think, right. To be able to travel and yeah. be somewhere else. Delivering all the value. Thank you, Rish. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And yeah, thank you, you so much. You know what? If you did like this episode, you could share it with a friend. I would I would love you forever. Uh, until next episode, live a life of abundance. And I'll see you guys on the next one.